Well, a very good afternoon to you all. Here we go again, Tuesday the 30th of January 2024. We're here to take a look at the weather for the next couple of days. But not only that, we're going to have a little look back at the month just gone. We're going to have a look at next week and we're going to have a little longer look into the bigger picture and talk about a bit of a problem that I've noticed, getting cold air into the south. So, yeah, without further ado, let's move it all along. We'll start off by looking at the central England temperature for January across the UK. It's sitting at... 4.5.7 so on the face of it it looks like a fairly average benign month but that does hide uh, a couple of interesting spells of weather obviously we had that very cold spell mid-month across many parts of the UK particularly the north this is the uh, weather station in the Midlands at Shepshed near Loughborough you see that we've been up to 14.5 as a high this month but temperatures did dip to around about minus 5.2 in the middle of the month 54 millimetres of rain on a month that has averaged five degrees. Scotland, we're going to move up to Cumbernauld. I'm going to use a similar sort of format up there, somewhat cooler. The highest temperature you've had in Cumbernauld this month, 12.2. 107 millimetres of rain, so rather wetter towards the north, um, with an average temperature up there of 2.9. So that's in contrast to five degrees down in the Midlands. So colder further north as you would expect in the UK in winter we've also had a couple of named storms and uh, if we just take a look at that we had the one on the 21st that was Isha and then we had the storm just a couple of days later so see, yeah, it's been a fairly volatile old month as well right just let's have a look at temperatures of the past there were four nights in the middle of january where the temperature this month fell below minus 15 degrees but that really all pales into insignificance when you look at the all-time low temperature records in scotland minus 27.2 at braemar that was set in 1982 and 1895 and also more recently Altenhara on the 30th of december 19 95 minus 27.2 uh, minus 26.1 at Newport in Shropshire back on that 10th of January 1982 I do actually remember that night I was a fresh-faced 12 year old incredible temperatures being recorded at the time and Wales minus 23.3 that was your overnight low way back in that brutal winter of 1940 towards Northern Ireland you had your coldest ever January temperature away or should I say coldest ever uh, ever temperature on Christmas Eve 2010 minus 18.7 a very cold month December 2010 I believe it was our last sub zero CET temperature right we've not only had cold weather but we've had a noteworthy high temperature this month look at that 19.6 degrees at Kinlochwe this is the highest ever recorded January temperature in the United Kingdom. A bizarre set of um, weather synoptics come together to achieve this record. What you had was you had mild air aloft, quite warm air aloft for the time of year. That had started a few days previously down across Spain. It had moved northwards in the flow. What you then had on Sunday was the recipe for uh, some very mild air to be pushing up across the northwest of Scotland. A cold front was pushed in from the west. Strong winds were increasing uh, on, in advance of this front. And you had mountains in the way. And what happened was this warm, moist air was forced to rise. It reached the top of the mountains. It was then forced to descend on the other side. What happens when it descends? It compresses and it warms, a bit like a car tyre. The recipe was ripe for this to occur. 19.6 degrees was achieved we are getting perilously close aren't we to achieving 20 degrees in february so yeah a very noteworthy day all courtesy of a thing called the phone effect google that one it's uh it's, yeah it's responsible for such localized very warm temperatures right no such dramas today all very benign current maximum temperatures are around about 8 to 10 degrees across the country so just slightly above average top of the hots 10 degrees in leeming right what we've got going on in the atmosphere today is we're between two weather systems so 
to the uh, southeast of the UK. You've got the cold front that cleared this morning. To the northwest of the UK, you've got a new cold front that's pushing in from the Atlantic, which is going to be coming in tomorrow to bring some really quite strong winds, quite a bit of action associated with that, some squally rain wind, and there are some warnings out for that. But back to the here and the now, it is a fairly sort of benign sort of day. It's rather cloudy across the east of the UK uh, and towards sort of some parts of Wales as well. But towards the north of the UK, particularly eastern Scotland, northern England and Ireland, it is set fair. And if we just move up to Loch Ness, drum the drocket, this is the... Uh, the camera this afternoon, lovely sunny skies, temperatures around about sort of six degrees. I've checked out for Nessie, but I can't see her. Lovely sunny skies up there. We'll move over to the west coast of Ireland. There's Sligo, and this is at a place called Strand Hill Beach. Once again, sunny skies, light breezes, all very pleasant. Towards the north of England on the high Pennines, I think this is at Eden Hartside Calf. And the A686, yeah, the skies are fairly bright and clear. You had a little bit of snow yesterday. If you'd watched the forecast um, that I issued on Sunday, there was some talk of some snow on the high ground, but it was high ground. I think I only saw snow accumulating above around about three, four hundred metres, probably a little bit higher than that. And down here today in the southeast, it is a murky old day. Grey leaden skies, yeah, rather sort of like benign conditions. I was going to get out and take some photographs, but I just, I'm not feeling it. Anyway, back to the weather for the here and now. And all focus, as I've mentioned, is on tomorrow. So this is what we wake up to in the morning. We'll just move this over here. Uh, a cold front moving in from the west, some very strong winds, some extreme gusts coming into the northwest of Scotland. And for this, once again, the Met Office have issued a couple of weather warnings. They're valid from around about tomorrow morning. I'm just going to open one of them. This is affecting mainly the bulk of Scotland and now parts of northern England and some northern parts, some parts of Northern Ireland. Valid from nine o'clock tomorrow morning through until five o'clock. And the details of this are such that... Um, well, it's going to be windy. Um, I'll just have a little look at the details. It talks about strong and blustery southwesterly winds quickly moving southwards across Scotland on Wednesday, reaching Northern Ireland and Northern England by late morning or early afternoon. Gusts of 45 to 55 miles an hour are expected widely, with a few places, most likely hills and coastal areas, likely to see gusts of up to 65 miles an hour. I think this is more to do with the timing of of the uh, weather event the wind it's going to be the middle of the working week the middle of the day so yeah there could be some some sort of like impacts and i can see why the weather warning has been issued the warning to the north of scotland and towards Orkney and shetland is for a similar wind event but those winds to be somewhat stronger perhaps as high as 85 miles an hour over the northern isles for a time Right, so we'll take a look at the weather tomorrow. So we're tracking that cold front that will be moving southeastwards. This is what we wake up to. Uh, a bit of rain pushing down across the uh, north of Scotland into Ireland at this point. Quite a well-defined cold front, this one. Some heavy rain in tow with it. And then if we just push this forward throughout the course of the day, that cold front, it tracks southwards towards northern England by tea time and eventually reaches the south coast by the end of the day and towards the north of the UK by then you're in much clearer, colder and more showery conditions across the western parts of Scotland, wintry over the hills. So if we just take a look at these wind gusts, this is the UKV. I'm going to take it forward from five o'clock tomorrow morning. As I mentioned the other day, the reds are your gusts typically above 60 miles an hour. Your purples you're getting towards 70 and your, your, your lighter purples you're in excess of 80 miles an hour so if we just take this forward to six o'clock just notice how these winds they do transfer southeastwards with the cold front over the Atlantic notice how these breezes are all fairly uniform but as soon as it comes over Scotland it becomes very sort of variable and that's the mountain effect and this is where you're going to get some extremely strong gusts locally whilst other places you're going to miss them so yeah you know that with these effects that you know these winds can funnel i think it's fair to say that there is a period of strong winds on offer this will be the situation 
at midday or 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Notice that little line across towards the north of Scotland, that yellow line. That's actually the cold front. And just in front of that line, just to the north of Northern Ireland, just see how those gusts do increase just in front of the front. Now, if we just push that front forwards throughout the course of the afternoon, this is by two o'clock. The front by then is sitting over Northern Ireland. It's sitting across the borders. It's cleared through Scotland. And the strongest winds by then are transferring down towards the north of England. And then as the course of the afternoon progresses, the front tracks further south and this is at tea time with just a few strong winds left just in advance of the front across the north of england right so that's your situation with regard to the wind these are your temperatures tomorrow so we're starting around about sort of six to eight degrees across the far south but it will be a cold start for many tomorrow there will be a touch of frost in many central and northern parts of the uk but temperatures will lift as the day goes on, if we just track these temperatures as that front pushes through, it becomes milder for a time across the south, but it becomes significantly colder to the north. And you can you don't really need me to draw a line as to where that cold front is. This is at five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. This is where the cold front is sitting across Ireland. Right. What's interesting with this is the air mass. So. If we just take this forward through to tomorrow morning, this is where the cold front sits into mild across the south. This is your upper air temperature, 850, the very sort of much colder air pushes south. But then look what happens. It pushes down across the Midlands to well, it pushes down across northern England. This is by seven o'clock tomorrow night. This is eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. But then look what happens. That cold air struggles to reach the south and then what happens is as we move through thursday that cold air gets mixed out from the north or from the southwest the milder air comes in without the really cold upper air getting towards the south and this is a problem that we are facing in the south of england with more frequency these days it just seems that the high pressure systems are just too close to the south of the uk to allow proper entrenchment of very cold air from the north so this is a problem for the south and this is why we're just not getting the cold weather for a sustained amount of time anyway let's talk about thursday now so by thursday we all wake up that cold front from the day previously will be in continental europe pushing out the way and then towards the northwest of the uk you've got a new weather front that will be turning things milder from the west so the weather situation for thursday is we start off rather cloudy in the far south with outbreaks of rain uh, pushing out the way could just linger for a while close to the south coast but i think most models now are pushing it out the way and then thursday is a mainly dry and fine day with sunny skies particularly across the south um, but towards the north that warm front by evening will just be starting to come in just to turn things wet across Western Scotland, Northern Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland and towards southwestern parts of Scotland by the end of the day. Notice how the breezes start to increase your temperatures on Thursday. You're starting rather cold again across many parts of the UK, particularly Wales, particularly parts of Southern Ireland and some central parts of scotland will be in that somewhat colder air further north and by the afternoon your temperatures will be peaking around about seven or eight degrees in the south three to five further north across northern england and scotland milder air coming into ireland later on in the day right we're now going to move this forward i know we've been speaking about the cold weather for next week there's a lot of talk about snow arriving next week well, I'm looking at this now. I don't think as things stand, it's going to be anything too significant. This is the chart. This is the new or I think we outlined potential onset days, the 6th of February for the next cold, potentially wintry spell of weather. This is the jet stream chart for that's been issued this morning for the 6th of February. Yes, we've got a bit of amplification. We've got some air coming down from the north. We've got a cold front. We've got cold air pushing in from the north but i'm going to show you a chart from the middle of the month to show you what a proper northerly looks like so just 
just keep this one in mind. Look at the jet. It's up towards Iceland. It dip, dips down across the UK. But this is what the jet stream looked like in mid-January when we had that really cold burst of air. That jet stream was firing all the way down from the Arctic. It got virtually to the south coast and it was virtually straight down from the north in comparison to next week's very weak northwesterly, I'm going to call it, which isn't offering too much in the way of a wintry signal at the moment. But the signal is still there and we will be tracking it. But I think it's fair to say at the moment, um, you know, when we compare it to what we had at the um middle of the month it's it's a very weak one indeed right so we'll now just move forward to next week and i'm just going to show you um the problem that we face with getting cold air into the south so yeah the signal is there next week for colder air to come down from the north on that jet stream you know it will be cold across scotland and there is the risk of wintry shares but just notice there is always always in the south that area of high pressure, always very close. And then what tends to happen is you run that forward the next day, the cold air comes down, it tries to come down, but no sooner has it reached the south coast, then that new ridge of high pressure pushes that mild air straight north again. So that sort of a couple of days later, you're back to the status quo in the south. Things remain mild with cold spells, very temporary indeed. Right, longer term, we will take a look at these ensembles before we bring it to a close. So this was the GFS this morning from the six o'clock run. The signal is such now that we are looking mild next week. For the most part, the signal around the 6th of the month, 6th of February, for cold conditions to reach the south has by and largely disappeared. There is a signal for something potentially a little bit colder around the 10th of February onwards, but that is all in la la land um, you know lots of spread on those ensembles confidence is very low if we do pick something up we will track it so that's london very weak signal now for um, cold weather next week in contrast to aberdeen where we'll take a look at the same set of ensembles notice how they're up there in aberdeen there is a stronger signal for those 850 temperatures to fall quite a bit lower bit of a bit of a spread still but there is a bit of a cluster in from the 6th through to probably the the 7th or the 8th only rather temporary for a colder spell to come in before things start to turn a little bit milder but once again that green line the operational run pointing towards longevity there but yeah i think to all intents and purposes the signal is there for a colder spell around the 6th to the 8th in aberdeen with a little bit of snow, we just put some snow spikes on it. Um, there is a chance in stark contrast to London where the signal has been lost. Right, I've, uh, I've gone on a little bit long. I thought it was probably worth doing. I think it's always good to have a little look at what's gone on be before, before we can take a look forward. But yeah, I just hope you found it useful. I'm going to get back to work now, but yeah. All have a lovely afternoon. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and ciao for now.